and so that you know if if there's any cartoons in this that you find objectionable or insulting, they're Neil's. And mine. <laughs> All right. I think we've I mean, these people are just like so eager to go. We should probably just bust loose. So here we go. Um, so as a bit of background, how do we get here? Uh, uh, honestly, it's it's customers and uh, listening to how they want to manage reader populations and, and paying attention to, to getting that to work for them. In addition to customers, we've also had a lot of people come and visit us not visit us so much now but uh they call us now but anyway that you know they'll be talking about mqtt as a as a delivery format or they'll be talking about azure or green grass as the best way to ever operate your iot devices and you know we've had good conversations there there does seem to be some merit there but we haven't really seen our customer world ask us to bring those to them so quite honestly we just haven't done much work there uh, before we get started um when we talk about customers our, our customers are people uh that we really value that they become our friends over time uh the restful api work was launched uh with an interaction with healthcare logistics or hcl uh kurt, kurt wolf stephen stock kevin watts and tiffany timmons it's a shout out to you I uh, really enjoyed working with you guys. On the LLRP side, uh, we're working with a company called Reynolds and Reynolds. Uh, Reynolds and Reynolds is a software development company, and this particular application is focusing on automotive tracking. Um, they have a deployed base. They use LLRP to talk to their deployed base, and they wanted to basically upgrade readers but not rewrite the whole thing. And uh, our point of contact there uh, is Mr. Stephen Hildebrand. So there's two Stevens uh, involved with this, and and thanks to uh, thanks to everybody there. Okay, so Neil's going to talk about LRP, and then uh, I'll uh, talk about RESTful. So go ahead, Neil. Yep. So uh, let's just start by talking a little bit about what each of these things are, <clears throat> and then we'll go into a little bit more details uh, about uh, um, how they use, etc. So LLRP, um, probably a lot of people know this already, but it's, it's low level reader protocol. Um, and um, it is actually a, UA, a, a standard. So this is a standard for UHF passive RFID readers specifically. And it's been specifically targeted at providing interoperability between RFID readers. So it is very focused on uh, this, this little silo of RFID readers. Yeah, it's not particularly applicable to uh, other types of, of, of I.O. devices or things of that kind. But it is a standard. It came out uh, back in 2007. Um, it was brought out by EPC Global, which is now called GS1. It evolved into GS1. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the GS1 website and you can download the specification, the LLRP specification. And some of the key characteristics, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail on these characteristics in the next few slides, but it's very low level. And what we really mean by low level is you have to implement quite a few instructions to actually do a certain amount of work versus other types of uh, solutions. And obviously, Joe will talk to you about RESTful in a second, but um, many of these other applica application types will be, uh, use less instructions to do the same, same type of thing. So there's actually over 100 low level of commands in LLRP. Joe, what about RESTful? Yeah, so uh, RESTful was uh, the PhD thesis, or based on the PhD thesis of a guy by the name of Roy Fielding, um, about the turn of the century. And it was created to, to basically allow us to talk back and forth between devices on the internet, and sort of predates IoT as a concept. Um, it's managed by a group called Open API, uh, and it's it's a very active, very vibrant thing that's sort of continuously evolving. Um, it's uh, it's in a it's a very very uh, interesting framework for how clients and servers interact uh, on the web. So on we go. So I'll talk about the community. One of the biggest differences 
uh, between RESTful and LLP is just the people involved. And I, there's a lot of people in the RESTful world. If you Google RESTful, um, you get about 34 million hits. If you Google RESTful programmers, you get almost 90 million hits. So, Neil? Yeah, so actually just before I talk about LLRP, I do want to point out, folks, that there is a QA and a uh, button on the, the user interface here. <clears throat> so if we go along, um, if you do have some questions, feel free to start typing them out there. And uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, the webinar here, we'll go through some of those uh, questions for you. Um, so yeah, what about LRP? Um, so it, this is, as we said before, it's really very focused on um, the, the readers themselves. So it's really provided by the reader manufacturers and it's targeting the, the people that have software that need to be integrated onto the, those readers. Um, so it's really not an IoT thing per se. Um, sure. and again, like Joe did, you know, if you go and Google some of the key phrases associated with uh, LLRP, um, as you can see from the numbers here, I mean, you get far fewer results. Yeah. Then, so, oh, go, go ahead. I, I thought you were done there. Uh, and so, you know, this is really uh, uh, emblematic, really, of the fact that you know, there's fewer fewer programs out there that understand LLRP because um, it is more targeted. Uh, whereas RESTful, of course, is um, you know, applicable to uh, much larger markets. Um, so there's more people out there that understand it. And um, you know, RESTful programmers are, you know, there's lots of them out there, quite frankly. Yeah. So it's interesting in the RESTful world because it, it's kind of like fans, you know. So how popular is it? Well, if I Google Brad Pitt, we get about the same number of hits for RESTful API programmers. And he has a fan world that follows him. And, you know, you can find RESTful guys that argue about the difference between encryption and authentication. And it's a serious discussion. And by contrast, you're looking for a minor character in a 70s sitcom. Uh, Mr. Looking Land is a fine guy, but it's a much more boutique, much more uh, constrained world of people that are talking about this stuff. And actually, those are my comments comics so if you're offended by those you can still blame neil yeah thanks joe by the way i hadn't seen those before people so. <laughs> um so let's talk about some of the pros and cons and, and obviously we're going to go into uh, further detail as well but um, just from a high level um on the llrp side of things the, the clear advantage here is this is a standard um, as I said before, you can download it. So, you know, it's, it's pretty regimented in terms of, of what it is. Um, and um, it does provide that interoperability between readers so that. For, for, that with, with, with a caveat, and that caveat is that uh, the reader manufacturer is, has implemented LLRP, and you'll see that not all of them have. Yep, absolutely. That's a fair comment. Um, and we talk about interoperability here, and perhaps we should. You know, just highlight what that really means. I mean, the idea is, yes, it provides an interface that in theory you can, you know, drop in a reader from a different manufacturer with, in theory, zero, um, zero changes to the, the software. Um, or you could actually have a kind of a mixed population of readers. Um, the reality is a little bit different and it's where we start to touch on to some of the disadvantages. Um, now, first of all, this is very targeted at, at readers and fixed readers only, and we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. And um, the way people implement and use LLRP is usually uh, implementations want to actually access some of the unique capabilities of particular readers. So there's custom extensions that end up using those, and that, by definition, then makes that LLRP implementation not supportable. <laughs> Um, and so it kind of defeats the, uh, some of the purpose of its, uh, its main intent. It is very low level, as we said before, and we mentioned that a few times. And um, because it's so siloed at RFID, there's just far fewer skilled programmers available to, uh, to implement LLRP. Right. Yeah, so RESTful, of course, it is, uh, there's a lot of work there and it's, evolving rather quickly and continuously. So it, it's hard to call it a, a, a rigid standard with, you know, a, a lot of fixed documentation. Uh, it is very good at, at hooking up IoT devices and it handles all the standard payloads that you're used to. It 
does a lot of things in the networking world, things like security, uh, that that it just does sort of as part of the show. And you know, the guys like Brad and and Census that are programming that, well, they'll say, well, it's not really that free. I still have to program, but it provides a much more rich environment there. I mean, the, the, quite honestly, the only problem that we from the from the RFID perspective, you know, it's not really an established standard, but it does a lot of things really well. Uh, this is Niels. So <laughs> put me in the deep end. <clears throat> so yeah, we've like a little bit of fun with things. So um, and, you know, we're poking a little bit of fun here at LLRP. Um, but in reality, I mean, LLRP certainly has its place in, in our little society here. Um, it, it is a stat, it's been around for a while. Um, there are people using it, and as you'll see later on, um, you know, who's who's providing it. So, right. you know, there's a lot of folk out there um, that, that are using this, and quite often we'll, we'll see RFPs or RFQs. And LLRP is actually, um, you know, part of the actual requirements. So it's, um, you know, it's kind of a must have for certain industries, you know, maybe government, for example, certain areas of the government, for example. Um, having said that, uh, I've often seen uh, LLRP spelled out as requirements on some of these RFPs, and um, that's used to weed out you know, certain certain providers, I guess. Uh, but at the end of the day, the implementation doesn't end up using LLRP because of some of the disadvantages that um, that it does have. Right. So go ahead, Neil. So if we take a look at the kind of a, a programmer's view uh, of, of these two different uh, paradigms. Um, so with LLRP, as we said, you know, it's, um, it's been around uh, in the most recent variation of it anyway, since 2010, um, you know, very, very focused on RFID. Um, you know, it's, it's got a quite a bit of programming effort behind it uh, because it's so low level and, um, you know, that's, it's got a bit of a, a bad name because of that. Um, and of course, it's very RFID centric. So, right. in terms of who would we kind of recommend this for? Um, certainly, if you're very focused on you know the RFID side of the application, or the application is primarily RFID and not much else, and you're really concerned about interfacing to the readers, um, then you know this this makes a lot of sense. And and the same with mixed reader environments. If you really want to have a similar set of looking code that can interface to readers um, from different manufacturers and again it makes a whole bunch of sense but as soon, as soon as you start getting into uh, iot world then you know this is where uh, restful starts to, to look more interesting yeah it, it's kind of interesting because we uh, a lot of the things that are starting to pop into people's world like security and encryption authentication all of that stuff it, it it should be said that LLRP can you can program around it to make it do those things, but it's not it LLRP wasn't is doesn't have that sort of as a native capability, and that's another place um, to give you pause if you're thinking about a new install. The other thing which we're we'll trying to talk about in the end is Rain uh, RFID the the industry group now has a, a new uh, reader pro call it's it's not low level it's really light it's early days for it um but if you're looking for a really light simple thing that doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of restful but you don't want the heavy weight of llrp you could look at that so on the restful side uh it's open and there's a big communicate key out there so you can you can interact with people and uh, make a lot of progress that way. The development environment is very, very friendly. Uh, we've already talked about those other points. Obviously, it, it is a creature of the web and mobile platforms. Um, it's also because so much of the nitty gritty, and we'll talk about this in another slide, is sort of handled offline. It allows you to have a better dialogue with feature sets with your customers. And that's an interesting you know, I'm I'm not really a programmer, but as I listen to to the the dialogue between us and the customer about the feature set for um, RESTful, it, it is a more it's easier to be I guess customer friendly. 
Um, about the, the only place where we're going to sort of raise our eyebrows here is if you've got a, a, an IoT sensor that's screaming out a ton of data, th this isn't the right um, this isn't the right thing to use. You probably need a very specific uh, communications infrastructure for that. And so this is, you know, we're talking about uh, what does it feel like? The left is the programming required to set a power on an antenna. The right is LLRP. <laughs> and you get a feeling for um, uh, the density of, of what uh, uh, RESTful does versus the, the more literal and, and lower level uh, LLRP language. Yeah, and you get, kind of get an analogy as well. So you kind of hear quite a lot, which is um, people talk about LLRP being low level, almost like a uh, assembler code, um, which is not quite that low, but you know, that's the type of operations you do versus something which is a high level language like C sharp, and, and that's the difference. Yeah, so it's one of the things that uh, uh, Brad brought up to me, and I'm trying to understand, well, what are these things and how, how do you use them? Was the fact that RESTful actually has a, 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 a rich body of code generation. So I, I put the direct quote there, um, and you can read it. I'm not going to read it for you. But the translation is for certain operations, certain communication, and, and where you need to talk from one guy to another guy, and you know a little bit about both of those, uh, you, can, you can look to uh, pieces of RESTful to actually generate the code to do that. And you have little stubs where you put information in to fill out the particulars of what you send, but it actually does this code so that you don't have to do that. And more of your time is spent talking to the customer about, you know, how do we upgrade something in the field or how does something look? So Neil, we'll just every other one. So you go ahead and hop in with the first one. Yeah. So which is uh, better for just uh, reader control? Um, I mean, really, there's not really that much difference between them. Um, you right. can maybe LLRP you know, is more suited for RFID, but there's really not a huge amount of difference when it comes to the specific control of a reader. Yeah, if you're just looking for general sensor, uh, it's really clear that Russell's your guy. So, Neil? Yeah, and in terms of lines of code, again, we've hinted at this already, um, Wrestle just wins in terms of the simplicity, um, just because of the uh, uh, how low-level LLRP really is. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking at lines of code, uh, Wrestle's probably the way to go. Yeah, it, if you ask for who has better resources and documentation, um, it, it's kind of a different thing. There's a big community that's actively working in RESTful. And so, you know, there's forums that you can go and see and stuff like that. LLRP isn't active in that sense, but it is uh, it is fully documented and there are support libraries. So although it's it's not this, it isn't a vibrant changing thing, it's more static. It is uh, pretty clear what it is and what you have to do to make it work. Neil? Yeah, there's one better for handling a lot of sensors. Um, well, this is again where RESTful really comes uh, into play because you know it is more IoT oriented, it's more internet orientated. Um, so it's it's better for handling you know, web server type server and those kinds of things. So it's easier to to scale, um, not just in terms of number of sensors, but in terms of uh, different types of sensors. Whereas LLRP again is pretty pretty focused on just RFID. Yeah, so there's often an interesting question about, okay, I want to do stuff that's cloud-based and it, it sounds great and it and it is, you know, it's nice to, you'll open up a little browser and there's your reader and it feels fun, but it quickly gets into sort of the more important issues about how do you make sure that you're talking to the right thing and how do you make sure other people aren't. So it's security issues and it is a place where RESTful does a really good job. Yep. MQTT, Neil. Yeah, so MQTT gets uh, mentioned a few times. Um, it's interesting because it's actually more of a uh, data format specification. Um, so it could actually really kind of live alongside uh, something like RESTful, really. But, um, um, but yeah, because of that, it's, um, it is a data format. So it's, it's a bit different to a different paradigm to both LLRP and RESTful. Yeah, and, and honestly, one of the things that's interesting is we have had people on the uh, software side 
you know, Microsoft comes and visits and says, hey, you know, we really have this cool thing that uses MQTT and, and we think it's great. But what we haven't had is we haven't had any end customer look at that and say, you know, thou shall bring green grass or uh, uh, Azure or whatever into my world. And, and ultimately we pay more attention to our customers than we do people like uh, Amazon or Microsoft in sort of guiding our interfaces. Yeah, well, Joe, by the way, we do have a question on, uh, about uh, you know, Azure and, and uh, Green Grass. We'll come back to that maybe in the Q&A. Okay, good luck with me being able to answer that, but maybe Neil will help you out. <laughs> uh, is RESTful transportable? I, if it's written in JavaScript, potentially yes. I, practically, if you're talking to different sensors, every sensor that you talk to uh, there needs to be some work there. Um, in, in fairness to LLRP, LLRP does have custom codes and they, they sort of have envisioned this expanding to doing other things, but it's just kind of, it's just sort of painful to do it that way. Yeah. On the cost side, Neil? Yeah, on the cost side, it's a nice simple one. There's really no cost associated with, uh, no direct cost anyway associated with either of them. I mean, you can get into minutia about whether or not you want to join GS1 um, uh, because you're interested in LRP, but you don't have to. Right. So speaking of GS1, so why is LLRP managed by the same guys that manage barcode? And it's not a coding or a technical answer. It's RFID was seen as a barcode replacement. So RFID as an industry and barcode have a lot of commonality in how they're viewed and managed. Historical reasons. <laughs> yeah. So we're a member of Rain. We like the the folks at Rain uh, quite a lot. A, a big shout out to them. Uh, they have their own interface, which is supposed to be like an LLRP uh, light. So they get at some of the shortcomings there. Um, yeah, it's kind of seen as a replacement in, in some respects, although it's not. You know, it, it's trying to address some of the shortcomings that. That LLRP has, you know, it's, this is not a low-level uh, programming language. This is a higher level, um, and but it is really targeted at being very light, um, so it can actually be uh, integrated into just a microcontroller. It doesn't need to have a whole Linux operating system and big, fast 64-bit CPUs. So it can actually run on just about anything, and that's really what it's targeted at doing. So, yep. you know, I claim it to be, you know, pretty simple to implement. Um, and uh, independent of um, uh, the type of communication structure that's uh, part of the system. So one of the things we like to do is just sort of just survey what, what folks are doing. And um, if we start at the right with RAIN, you can see that Zebra has adopted the RAIN uh, reader control. Um, no other company that we know of at least is making it publicly easy to see that we're doing that. RESTful is kind of in the same boat. Uh, Impinge and since this are uh, actively working on RESTful interfaces. Pretty much everybody uh, uh, does LLP and everybody has their own deal <laughs> or if they have their proprietary stuff. Right. Any any other color on this one? Um, the only thing I would say, I mean, um, to be perfectly honest, folks, I mean, this, this was. Um... Uh, obtained from you know, openly available information. So certainly, if you're aware of anyone else uh, offering RESTful or RCI, you know, let us know. We're kind of be interested to, to know about that too. But um, that's mm -hmm. that's a bit of research on this, and that's what we found out. Yep. So handhelds are a different kettle of fish. Uh, nobody uses LLRP for handhelds. That's sort of Android and iOS. Um. RESTful could potentially be working with handhelds, I guess, uh, if if desired, right, Neil? Well, kind of. I mean, in theory, it could be, but I mean, the reality is it's, it's probably not going to be. Um, it tends to be more proprietary um, interfacing between what's running on the iOS or Android device and uh, the particular hardware inside the handheld. Uh, but right. most communication goes on between the two is uh, Bluetooth and uh, kind of jumping to a bad assumption here, which is, um, you know, that most of these uh, handhelds are sled devices, and uh, that's becoming more true these days. Uh, but obviously, there's still a lot of monolithic devices out there that have right. 
the display and, and, and compute power integrated into the handheld too. Yep. Okay. Wanted to take uh, a moment to sort of brag on, on the team and, and say thank you to our customers. Uh, in 2019, uh, we grew by 55% year on year. In 2020, in the middle of COVID, and I really want to be appreciative to the customers that allowed this to happen and the staff that made it happen. We'll grow uh, with the orders we have in the book. We'll have about a 98% growth rate this year. And all of you out there are saying, come on, man, if you're the boss, why don't you just squeeze them harder so that it gets to be 100% because then you can say double. And yeah, it'd be great if we can double. But in any case, uh, a really big thank you uh, to the team and a really big thank you to the customers that uh, that drove this. And with that, we're gonna talk about our next webinar and just a ton of passion here. This is years of work. Uh, this will be our fourth uh, generation reader. And you can look at that quote from William Shakespeare and you can say, what in the world are they bringing that kind of quote into a technical dialogue and the whole point is to pique your curiosity but there there are a lot of things that have been omitted from the technology of RFID and as we come and we work and we listen to customers about what problems they see and our experience from other industries shows us different things there's a lot that can be done here and so the next announcement uh it'll be a killer this reader simply does things a lot of things that there isn't another reader in the world that exists uh that can do hey, so let's, let's face it a any company that's quoting shakespeare at you during a webinar on rfid can't be all bad yeah <laughs> yeah the, 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 the country that voted for brexit <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Please all right so Neil, what kind of questions do we have today? Well, We're all set to go. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so guys, girls, uh, everyone on on the webinar here, feel free to type in a few questions if you have them. We just got uh, one right now, which is uh, talking about or asking us about um, what our take is on uh, green cross and, and other cloud based platforms. And uh, uh, okay, so yeah. I'll take a whack and. Um, then Neil can hop in. So we, uh, one of our readers is is green grass capable, um, and another one is is working with a firm that uh, specializes in MQTT transport. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you when they come in, when they come to the office and they sit down and they show us the things they can do in terms of device discovery and and device status understanding and uh, data collection, it looks. It looks really clean and very powerful. Um, the difficulty that we have is is that it it doesn't have pull from customers, and you know, it, a lot of times we don't understand fully what customers want and why. We, we do our best, but on this one, it just doesn't seem like what's being offered in those packages is economically compelling to customers. Neil, any any comments on from? Uh, yeah, Your side? yeah. I mean, we've seen um, yeah a few inquiries about um, you know both green grass and Azure, um, but it's kind of interesting. I mean, it, it um, you know the, 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 the we get a few questions about it, but um, um, we still haven't seen much in the way of uh, customers actually implementing around it. There's certainly a lot out there. There's no no question about it, but we haven't seen a whole bunch of it. A lot of inquiries, uh, not much in the way of a uh, motion on it and it may be because um obviously a lot of our customers are isvs and so you know, the isvs themselves are kind of dealing with uh with a lot of that and we're, we're not seeing quite so much of it uh, okay <laughs> just got a uh, a comment thank thank you kurt <laughs> uh, any more questions uh thank you kurt kurt's famous you know, it, if the RESTful guy is Brad Pitt, I think that that sort of means that Kurt is the RFID world's Brad Pitt. <laughs> I'm not sure what that puts me, but we'll I think we'll leave that one. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure I know her lazy email. <laughs> yep. Me too. Uh, 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 anything else? Place? Oh, boy from down under. There we go. I think we know who that is. Hi, Tom. <laughs> hey, Mr. Gunthorpe. And yes, we uh, will share the presentation. So, uh, yeah, a good question. So, we'll share the presentation. Uh, normally, what we also do because you can't see our faces right now, we're actually uh, video recording ourselves as well. And, um, you know, between now and the other side of Thanksgiving, we've got Thanksgiving here in the States, uh, we'll roll this into a little video as well. Um, so you can see the slides plus, uh, uh, plus us on the, on the video. So we'll get that shared with you as well. So yeah, good question. Yeah, so Tom, you get to see us. I mean, that's a real highlight for a man down under. Okay, um, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, you'll be seeing in the next coming days uh, the announcement for the fourth generation reader. And in that announcement, it'll promise great things, but it won't tell you at all what we're actually going to show you. So you can you can get excited and you can think about stuff. Yeah, we'll drag you screaming and shouting to another webinar. No, they won't be screaming and shouting. They'll be busting the door down. By the way, to all of you, uh, very best wishes for uh, if if you're in the States uh, for uh, a very, very happy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. And, you know, everybody else out there, the best wishes to you and stay healthy. Yep. And that's about it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. I'll tell you, it's really hard sitting alone, staring at a screen and, and trying to have some yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to make this not painful for the poor people listening to it. So there's this obligation to have banter. And it's a little weird, you know, you're just sitting by yourself, you know, talking to one other guy. Joe, this is post COVID. You sit in front of the screen by yourself all day. What are you talking about? You got your video going for later, Joe? Pardon me? Do you have your video going for, for later? You mean the quick time thing so that we can put this together into a massively cool interactive media affair? Yep. Yeah, I do.